Got some news on a couple of draft picks in the Mitch Kupchak era. Are they going to be here long term? Plus, Rod Morrow joins us to give his opening week thoughts and ask us a sicko satchel question. All today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, in a minute, cuz we live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We are free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube. And, man, I I tell you, it makes me so happy to see Rod Morrow on the show, one of our favorites. You can find him on Twitter, at Rodimus Prime. You can also check him out on the Black Guy Who Tips podcast, anywhere you get your podcast. Hilarious. One of our favorite people, just how it is. I think that's fair to say, uh, and we're happy to have him on. Rod, we appreciate it, man. How are you? Hey, man, happy to be here. I listen to y'all every day um, that y'all like put a show out, and uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm a fan. I I, I, I'm, I I came with sicko satchel questions. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> the, the satchel is full. And you know what else is great, too, Doug? Like I don't know if it's true for you, but... Doug, I, I get to see you dance and beat bopping around all the time mm-hmm. during the intro. Mm-hmm. But when I see Rod smile and hear that intro that we've all loved for years now and just mm, like <laughs> me mugging to the beat yeah. coming in. That's my jam. Like, yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You could have just complimented Rod. I don't know that it required the <laughs> a sort of a backhanded compliment that I got. <laughs> It wasn't intended that way. It's just that I see you beat bop all the time, and I, I'm like used you to it. You could have just—it's like, like you—it's it. like you wanted to go to Rod, and it, you could have just walked around me and said you had to <laughs> shove me to the ground to go and give Rod a hug. I don't get it. Yeah, I, I Iverson stepped over you, and I. Apologize. I do have a question though. Where, What's up? where does the sound, the clip of in a minute, cub? We live. Who, who said that? Where does that come from? Tell the people, Doug. I'm I'm glad you asked. Uh, we get asked this question every once in a while. Um, this was made, man. This that intro is probably the the guts of that intro are probably five years old now. It dates back to um, Tony Allen, the grind father. It was when they first allowed players to select uh, players for the All Star game, and they were making a big deal about it. And some of the players were filmed making their selections. And, it, and I don't know if you could, I don't know if I could even find the original clip anymore, but Tony Allen picking who he wanted to be in the All Star game was very hilarious to us at, at, at the time. And they were doing it live, I think, on whatever Twitter's live thing was called at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's dead now. You can't even, you can't even get on it anymore. Um, but Tony Allen, he had a couple of great quotes in that. And one of them was, in a minute, Co, we live. And it was great. <laughs> And so that became it. part of the intro. But there were a lot of a lot of drops from that. What did he call? Oh, it, Della Vadova. He called Matthew Della Dova, which was funny. <laughs> we he said that drop because for a he while. didn't know who it was. Yeah. He was like Della Dova. Um, <laughs> there was just so many great Tony Allen pieces from that. Yeah, oh, I love him. Yeah, the, the intro is fantastic. That's the voice of Doug Branson, too, by the way. Check him out on the Substack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. I'm Walker Mayo. Listen to me every weekday on WFNZ from 12 to 3 p.m. And real quickly, got to give one more shout out. Have to give a shout out to FanDuel. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's a $150 win if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com com slash locked on to get started all right so this is the news that i was referencing in the cold open we got some news not only on mark williams but also james book Knight. mark williams still going to be under contract with the hornets for at least the next year plus with them picking up their option on mark williams but the hornets declined to pick up the four-year six million dollar option on james book Knight's uh, rookie contract And they did exercise Williams third year option in time for Tuesday's NBA mandated deadline. So I'll ask you this, Doug, before we get to the sicko satchel question with Rod, this means the unofficial, but kind of official ends to James book Knight's career with Charlotte, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't expect them to like sign him to a veteran minimum contract uh, next season. I don't know if any team will um, with all of the, background around uh book night and the dui arrest uh th- that that is still pending the the punishment for that is still pending 
Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know what it means for his future career in the NBA. It's a tough end to that 2021 draft. Both of those first-round players now uh, no longer with the Hornets after Kai Jones was released. And, um, yeah, I think I think the Hornets just decided, all right, it's, it's time to wash our hands of it, move on. Hope JT Thor uh, continues to uh, give us good minutes. That was the second-round pick in 2021. Uh, but yeah, it's difficult because there were there was a lot of hope around Book Knight. Like it wasn't like it wasn't like when Book Knight was drafted, we were all like, "Oh, big risk." I don't know if this is going to work out. I think I think a lot of people were like, "Oh, cool." Well, James Book Knight fell to the Hornets. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember us during that pre-draft opinion. We we had other guys there that we would have liked to have select, but w- when Book Knight was selected, and especially when they went and they got K- Kai Jones at, at the end of the first round. Like, oh, okay, this team got mad more athletic. I that's gonna be so much more fun. Book night in the backcourt with LaMelo Ball, Kai Jones doing everything that he can do in the front court. I okay, I, I can see the vision and people were so high. Like, Rod, I don't know if you remember this, and I know you're not the mm-hmm. the big college basketball evaluator talent, how it's gonna translate to the pros, but mm-hmm. I do I remember the national publications, man. Lots of positive grades for the Hornets on that draft. Like I remember seeing yeah. A's, I remember seeing B pluses, and so that had to get fans excited. I would imagine, just like yourself. Yeah, I, I know I was excited about it. I think mostly um, it's that catch twenty two. I think Doug talks about this all the time, where like you don't, you kind of don't want people falling to you in a draft. Like it's like it's always like an yeah. open box special, but some, but it's also there's like an excitement when someone because you're like, oh, they're sleeping. Oh, they don't even know. You know, technically Lamelo kind of fell to us in this in the draft. Like, is like there were people that were like, I I don't yeah. know if this kid's. And we were like, uh, we'll take him. So like sometimes it works out. This is one of those times it didn't work out. And I would say like it didn't work out in unexpected ways. So mm-hmm. I don't think it was just a. It was. It didn't feel to me like a talent thing. It felt more like some things fell apart off the court for both Kai and James. And I don't. It's hard to put any of that on a front office unless there's like glaring red flags you know it's so these yeah. guys have off 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 the clock lives and sometimes it just interacts with on the court stuff and it's and it just doesn't go right and i i mean i hope they get it together i'd love to see these guys mature or get a second chance somewhere else you know or maybe third chance i don't know we would count mm-hmm. it now but I, I i don't wish any ill will towards them but it just sure. i can clearly tell it's not going to work here no, I mean neither of these guys are like knuckleheads. I mean these are, I, to me both of these guys are dealing with some serious human stuff that deserves sympathy and doesn't deserve like jokes on Twitter or whatever and, and they both probably need and I don't know if they they are going to do this. Um Kai might be forced to. James might get an opportunity somewhere, but I think both of them could actually st- stand some time away from basketball to to mend whatever they need to mend, heal whatever they need to heal because you know, like like Rod said, there was serious talent coming out of Connecticut, and and the team was excited about that talent. And unfortunately, well, and unfortunately, it's a reality that like these these players are human beings; their personal lives are intertwined with their talent. Like it, right. you know, talent alone doesn't do it. You have to go out there and execute, and it's difficult to execute when you are dealing with all of these issues. And Book Knight came in, I think, wanting to have a a featured role in in the offense or in the team in general and didn't get that and and that i think uh cascaded down and, and probably interacted with some other issues that he had going on and and it all fell apart um and and, and the, it, the history his history bit, with the hornets is is long and and unfortunately it's coming to an end a little bit of reminds like it, it's reminiscent of malik monk as far as like he had to go through what he went through here to to like and he says it it's not like we're making it up He's like, yeah, I, I wasn't ready for everything in Charlotte. I matured. Yeah. I It made me take things more seriously. And now you see him flourishing with Sacramento. So, you know, uh, we might be the stepping stone on, on the path of these people's lives. And, and and if that's the case, that's the case. It's unfortunate. But, you know. That's a like dark when you look up to tell the Hornets to hang, that, hang that in the arena. Stepping stone to people's career. We're going to hang the <laughs> yeah. banner. 
God. Rod just, it, I didn't realize you could do this, but Rod gave so much life to the Harlot Hornet grave that we saw on TNT. <laughs> that was, whew, buddy, you just said if you that. Haven't that seen, if you haven't seen it on TNT's Inside the NBA, they had a gravestone on their set that was dedicated to the Charlotte Hornets, but they, they did it very, uh, you know, because they are partners with the NBA, they did it very sneakily and covered the C and the S, and so it said Harlot Hornet, but we all know and Kenny, Kenny, of course, shout out Kenny. called it out. Shout out! I mean, shout out to Kenny defending us. Uh, even if it it got a little wonky at the end, it was like it, Lamelo and those other guys. And then I was like, no, yeah. no, finish strong. Don't <laughs> join the party that you're. But no, fighting. but that was Kenny. That was Kenny going to the defense because he's a North Carolina guy. Yeah. That was him going to the defense. And he realized when he got to the front lines that he had forgotten all of his weapons. Like he was like, "Oops, I don't." Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's like, yeah, PJ, and, uh, PJ Washington. Yeah, all yeah, those guys. yeah, that guy, PJ. Yeah, all right. <laughs> the, the stepping stone to success. Your Charlotte Hornets. Uh, that's that's a big Pat's going to have to say that next time he introduces the team. All right, let's go to uh, Rod Sicko Satchel question. He promised us one. He said he brought it for the first segment. So what you got for us, Rod? All right, so my sicko satchel, satchel question is, remember during, like, draft mania, before mm-hmm. any yes. picks were made, any, when it was, you know, Scoot, Brandon Miller, what are we going to do? There was, like, a off, like, a rumor or something that, like, maybe they could do a trade with Chicago, right? And Chicago's remember. falling apart. They've had a team meeting day one. Like... <laughs> We might be down bad. We're not down that bad. That's like, we're not right. team meeting <laughs> after game one bad. But, uh, you know, the the thing was, like, Zach Levine, um, DeMar DeRozan on the trading block, would we give it up for the second pick? Like, would you know, and, mm-hmm. and Doug was considering it pretty heavy. He was like, mm, I, I can see this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, now the season started. We got three games of what Brandon Miller looks like. We know what Zach and Mar look like. Mm-hmm. If the trade came up today, do you <laughs> do you consider that trade right now? It's a sicko question, Doug. That is a sicko question. It is. Yeah, it and is I'm a, trying to. It's, I'm trying to remember it's, the. It's deep, very sick. Go ahead. Oh well, no, I was going to say I remember it too. I I remember being I was against it. Right, like I because yeah, I remember. You were, Firmly, you were pretty entrenched against it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> it sounds like something I'd be <laughs> firmly against. Uh, I can't I imagine remember- you are not. You wouldn't be even more entrenched against it now. So really, I think it comes down to, to what I think yeah. because I was for it, and, and I would like to give my answer next. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, what a tease. What a tease. There you go. Coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. <laughs> Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Rod sitting like Mr. Burns, patiently waiting for Doug's answer on this. We'll get Doug's answer in just a moment, but not before we bring some attention to our sponsors. We appreciate FanDuel. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, even more than that. I was a fan of FanDuel a long time. I've been a fan of FanDuel for a long time. It's very easy to use. So make sure you go. And Walker, and Walker, Walker, we are going to do Bet the Buzz in segment three. We're going to use, we're going to get get the FanDuel lines for this game against the Rockets, and we're going to bet the buzz with our friend Rod Morrow. Yes, uh, FanDuel is also, I don't know if they know this, I apologize, but FanDuel is the official site of Bet the Buzz, which has to be pretty exciting, not only for them, but it is exciting for us too. So we appreciate them. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. More Locked On Hornets with Rod Morrow coming up next. There is Rod Morrow again. Find him on Twitter at Rod. I miss Prime very patiently, maybe not so patiently, waiting for Doug's answer after that fantastic tease. Great job, Doug. Yes, just like what, a harlot. Yep. Yeah, what? <laughs> 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 yes. Reveal the C here, Doug. What do you have for us? What is your answer to Rod's question? This is the rare instance when you drive the car off the lot and it actually gets more valuable. That doesn't happen very often. It's a little rare. Typically, you know, I was probably for that trade at the time because of that principle. When you have a draft pick, even if you know who the draft pick is going to be, unless it's going to be someone 
that is a surefire franchise changer like a Victor Wibanyama or a LeBron James or what have you, then typically that pick is going to be somewhat more valuable to teams. They're going to be willing to give up not only stars but future draft picks before you make the pick. But the minute you make the pick, that player suddenly becomes uh, less valuable, and the minute they step on the floor and reveal their game, they become significantly less valuable because they, they transform from the promise of what they can become to a rookie that's going to make lots of mistakes and you've got to invest a lot of time in. So typically that's what happens. But I think that Brandon Miller's performances so far have given so many of us uh, so much promise of what he can become. And, and he has revealed himself as to be the player that I think uh, was promised by Alabama fans, was promised by college basketball experts, was promised by the team in training camp telling us what this guy was and why they found him valuable. So no, I, I think the Hornets got to, they've got to hang around with this, with this idea. And honestly, you know, Rod, you kind of, I think answered the question w- with your question, which is, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan and that whole Bulls thing is a disaster. So I'm not yeah. sure that I want to sign on uh, to bring on a disaster at this point. That's fair. That's fair. Well, yeah. Well, yeah and, and this is too like, you're right. I've always said, you know, once the asset grows arms and legs, it usually does become less valuable. People mm-hmm. like the idea of the unknown. People like having the first round pick. There are so many options with this. What are we going to be able to do? Oh, everything and have hope that our decision is going to be the right one. Hell yeah, sign me up. Here's something really valuable in exchange for that, in exchange for the second overall pick. We had the same conversation with the Pelicans. Rod, it's funny Mm -hmm. you bring this particular sicko satchel question because the Pelicans, I think, were even heavily rumored. Like they scoot Henderson. Do you want to trade with the Pelicans and, and get Brandon Ingram or get Zion Williamson, who looks great, but we we'll see. Like I Zion is sensational it's it's all about the health risk with him and brandon right. ingram really good and so the, the brandon ingram one's interesting because that's like okay that was a comp for brandon miller and mm-hmm. if if brandon miller turns out to even be brandon ingram no one would say it's a flat out miss but i guess right. you would still want him to reach something beyond what brandon right. ingram is like all nba perennial top 15 player so that one's fascinating too. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, I'll take the younger asset. Uh, so at that you just kind of go with age and Brandon Miller already off to a strong start, getting to his spots, mm-hmm. hitting his shots. So, but that one's uh, also fascinating. All right, so yeah. that's Rod's sicko satchel question to Doug. Doug, you kind of brought a sicko satchel question to Rod almost, right? Don't you have one to ask Rod? Well, I brought a question about some of the sickos out there, the commenters. I do want to say that. Um, you know, my my baby is a little like that too. Once she grows arms and legs, she became less valuable because she's costing <laughs> us money now. Damn. Like she's no, but no, I don't mean that. I mean they're costing once they once they start. No, listen, once they start walking around, they cost you money. Bleep That's it. Kids. They just continue to cost you money. They destroy your stuff. And they cost you money. That's just a fact. That's I, I'm not judging. That's not a yeah. judgment. That's not I, you know. I don't mean anything mm. bad by that. That's just a fact. Would you trade her for Zach Levine or no? I'd consider it honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to see the full deal. I mean, it doesn't come with first round picks. I mean, I'd have to see the full deal. Levine's a lot of money too, though. You're not saving money, right? I mean, I understand <laughs> trading a child, true. but Levine that's brings true. a lot. Yeah, so she that's can't true. shoot threes right now, though. That's the problem. She can't. Uh, she does. She's not 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 hip to the modern game. She's hiding it like Nick Richards. All right, yeah. we, we, do, we do baby jokes. We do baby jokes. Get to the question. Uh, get to the question. Doug. Okay, this kind of hops off the question, Rod, about Brandon Miller mm-hmm. because I, there are a lot of. I don't know how many, but uh, I'll say a lot of commenters that want their pound of flesh from this podcast, particularly me, because I was driving Mm -hmm. the scoot wagon um, and and they want their (laughs) apologies. They want their yeah, they want me to like cry on air. They want to they want to feast on my tears. You host a a popular podcast. You you've you've got a lot of people that comment on your stuff as well. I don't know Mm -hmm. if this has ever happened to you, if you've gone strong on an opinion and then had to uh, defend that opinion. What do you think we should do in this situation? Um, so I think the easiest thing to do is to just like give a, a full-throated apology. Just like fall on your knees, rip your shirt apart, beg, you know, like an R&B song. Just whatever it takes to get the people off your back, you know, it's just worth it. 
uh, in the long run because ultimately, you know, uh, you're going to have Miller on this team for a long time, hopefully. Uh, these jerks are going to be jerks about it the whole time mm -hmm. until they get what they want. So I would Ooh. probably give them a full throat of apology and then just never bring it up again because <laughs> once I've apologized, there's nothing left to fight about. Like, what? what right. did you, you got what you wanted. We're all on the same team and we're all rooting for it. So that's probably my, you know, that's my three-dimensional chess is you just give them what they want, even if you just barely mean it. You just give it to them. Hey, I'm sorry. You guys are right whatever oh, <laughs> and uh, doug. that's it that's what i oh, did oh doug that that fights that fights every fiber of your being that ha that has to mm -hmm. fight every single part of your instinct it yeah, hurts. No, no, i'm I, a fighter I, too I, I, yeah so I, I respect I, I respect you rod i respect yeah. that i respect that opinion i will i will take <laughs> it under consideration very yeah. briefly before um i throw it in the trash because i am never apologizing <laughs> I'm not ready to have this conversation yet, but I'm just going to tell everyone right now. I'll preview it. I'll tease it. I am never how long, apologizing. How long does Scoot have to play like this and Brandon Miller have to play like this for before it gets to like a some point where you're like, Jesus Christ. All right, guys, you got it. I, I, I don't know what that scenario looks like, but it's going to be many years into the future. Uh, my, my, my baby might grow another set of arms and legs before that happens because, well, because this, this does take time to figure right. out. Like we don't even, we thought, I, I, I think there are some Timberwolves fans out there that halfway through uh, the, the rookie season of uh, Ant were like, mm. Hey, I don't know that we picked the right guy. Lamelo is right. looking like the rookie of the year. Uh, yeah, you know, this guy's every month mm -hmm. when he was healthy. No, LaMelo flat out would have won every single rookie of the month award yep. had he been healthy. And now, yep. and now where are we? We're not in that situation anymore. Yeah. Um, right. so, Hopefully you back. know, this thing takes time, but yeah, I w look, there are so many variables that go into these situations with rookies when we're trying to project it out to day one of the NBA, once they take the floor now, you know, injuries, uh, team construction, all of that. So many variables. But there is one constant, Rod, and that mm -hmm. constant is this. I will never apologize. <laughs> so I hope anyone out there that's waiting on that apology, I hope you've got a comfortable chair, there's snacks and coffee in the corner, because you're going to be waiting a long time. As a all fan right. of the show, this is the best entertainment scenario, so I don't want you to apologize. <laughs> But you were just asking my advice, you know. It's no, like, I, no, I appreciate it's like it. Like as no, a married I, man, if you were like, I'm fighting with my wife, what's the best thing to do? I'm like, uh, she's probably right. Just go ahead and take the trash out or whatever it is. Get it over with. You're not going to win this in the long run. But if it was like a sitcom, I'm like, no, you fight her to the death. That's that's better for me at home watching. And so you guys are like my sitcom <laughs> of the Hornets. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. We'll take that. I think that's yeah. good. All right. That's uh, that's Doug Branson and his dismount telling you that he's never going to apologize. <laughs> so it's not coming up in the next segment either. Coming up next on Locked on Hornets. <laughs> Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. It's bet the buzz. This time we're going to have Rod help us out. Usually it's David Walker, but Rod's going to be drawing for David. I think you'd be okay with it. He was out trick or treating with the kids as prime Dion primetime Sanders last night. He looked fantastic. So it's Rod helping us out on bet the buzz coming up next. It took a little while to assemble, but that's what happens with the bet the buzz. We have the duffel of doom. We got the side camera view again, Doug. I'm glad you brought it back because I know you were. It, I know you were saying it was a lot of work, but I think people like the side cam review. Yeah, man, I, I like seeing the little basketball mug. I I like it. I don't know. I'm glad All you right. brought it. Well, back. I well, I appreciate you for forcing me to do it because I was I definitely it was a, it's a lot of work to set that thing up, and you know uh, traditionally I do not like to do a lot of work for this show. <laughs> well, that, I'm glad I forced it a little bit. All right, Doug. So let's start. What you got for us today on Bet the Buzz? We are gonna bet. The bus. Uh, this is a segment for uh, people that are just tuning in. Uh, we are using our friends at FanDuel, bringing up the lines, which I can bring up right now on this game against uh, the Houston Rockets. Right now, uh, the Hornets. Wow, the line changed from this morning when I, before we started the show, the Hornets were getting only two points. Now it looks like they're getting two and a half points. So the line, I don't mm. know if it's off the book night news. That wouldn't make much sense. But the Hornets the are getting two. 
I blame the gravestone. <laughs> That's right. Harlot Hornet uh, cost the Hornets uh, half a point on these lines. Uh, so bet the buzz. Very simple game. I've got the Duffel of Doom. It's full of ping pong balls. The ping pong balls all have a number or something written on them. We'll each draw a ping pong ball, and that ping pong ball will tell us uh, how we are going to bet. Uh, David is playing along with us, David Walker. Uh, so Rod Morrow will be the celebrity drawer for uh, David Walker. So we'll find out um, how Rod will bet the buzz. And we are playing for charities that will be revealed later um, once they're not ashamed to be known uh, to be associated with us because we are losing money on this bet the buzz. Sorry, they may charity. be paying us by the end of this. I think we're going to steal money from charity oh, God. by the end it's, of this. To pay this our is not going as plans. We are. We apologize. This is this. Is, well, it, it turned out to be a, a a great PR thing. Now it's a, a PR nightmare. You know, lo- lo- local <laughs> podcast steals money from charities. It's not going well. <laughs> okay, uh, Rod, you are the guest, uh, so we will draw for you first. All right. Shuffling, rummaging, yeah. duffling, mm. and Rod. Dooming. Let's go to the yep. camera. Bring that side camera back. Got to bring the side camera back. Oh, wow. Look at this. We've got <laughs> GPT. GPT. <laughs> this is um, we're going to use our friends artificial intelligence uh, to determine who you will bet. Will you bet the Hornets or the Rockets? We are going to go to chat GPT and ask the question if a giant Hornet faced off against a rocket, who would win in that battle? Oh, and that is who you will I don't bet. like our chances. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, All right, so, so I will I will pull that up and we will read uh, chat GPT's answer. Um, here that, in a moment. That's fine. I'll, while you do that, I'll ask Rod. Like, okay, so what do you think GPT is going to tell us? Like, giant hornet. <laughs> yeah. Again, stay. I, like, giant rocket? I mean, yeah, that, like, a, I what think that size rocket? <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a normal human sized rocket. Okay. I, only, I upsize the Jeez. hornets for most of these battles. Okay. Uh, because, like, if it's a hornet against a bull, like, one single hornet is going to get right. trounced by a bull. Yeah. I think a giant hornet would kill a rocket okay i feel I, like a human sized rocket the problem is if if we're talking about injecting venom i don't think the rocket's gonna it be wouldn't kill by it, that. right so i i don't know though like the, in, the my, rocket, in my head cannon what's happening is the hornet attacks the rocket then the rocket attempts launch but you know that launch thing is so meticulous if anything's wrong it's gonna explode so once it's been punctured by the hornet it explodes upon. Oh, that's uh, a good point. Yeah, that, like you're, that's you're what, right. That's where I'm going. <laughs> you're right. <clears throat> I was thinking venom. Sorry, I'm getting choked up. I was thinking about venom, but you're right. A hole in a rocket. That's not a rocket I want to be on. Right. Bye. Like that. Yeah. No, you're making a lot more sense than I did. I apologize. Okay. Well, right, I, I'm right. not making it's any done. sense to the to the AI because uh, ChatGPT is very confused by my question. Uh, but I will mm. read you the answer. It did. It did come up with the answer, but it was a. It got a little saucy with me. I think it didn't like this question in particular. It says the outcome of a battle between a giant hornet and a rocket would depend on various factors, including the type of rocket, its fuel, and what you mean by winning. And it puts winning in quotation marks. <laughs> And then it says, if by rocket, in quotation marks, you mean a spacecraft or missile designed to travel at high speeds, then the rocket would almost certainly win in terms of destructive power. The propulsion and heat generated by a rocket would be far too intense for a hornet to withstand. Moreover, rockets are generally made of materials like aluminum and carbon fiber that would be virtually impervious to a hornet's stinger. Of course, the idea of these two battling is more the stuff of science fiction or animation than a realistic scenario. But in terms of raw power and durability, a rocket has a significant advantage mm. over a hornet so all of that to say rod uh you are uh and, and by virtue of you david is betting on the rockets tonight rockets minus two and a half <laughs> minus two and a half uh you know megatons of <laughs> yeah. nuclear power <laughs> all right there you go it's a depressing bet yeah rod said it like that too rockets uh minus two and a half yeah that's it's a brutal bet. It's not. Yeah. It, that's not going to be fantastic. But okay. What you got for me, Doug? I'll come up next. What uh? What you going to draw for me? Here we go. Rummaging, shuffling. All right. Number twenty-two. This is the second time that the deuces have I'd been say. drawn, and that mm. uh, those deuces represent uh, not our friend Brian Roberts, but instead they represent our friend Lord Byron, and that means you are going to have to do a parlay. And we'll go back to uh, the mug here to find out what number of parlay you will do, what step 
And that's going to be... Oh, wow. You have to do a four-leg parlay. Wow. <laughs> so I'll let you think uh, if you want to okay. uh, draw up FanDuel. Um, okay. Does it all have to be from this game, his parlay? Yes. Wow. Yes. You can now now it well <laughs> actually no 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 and, and I'm going to consult the rule book here. Okay. It it you can combine games. You don't have to do the four leg parlay just from this game. I mean, I think it would be more fun if you did it that way, but if you wanted to do a four game I'll parlay. I'll this game. Yeah, I mean, nothing nothing is stopping you. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think it's much more fun if you do the parlay the other way. No, I'll stick with this game. Yeah, I'm going to pull it up right now just to see what the props are. And right, uh, I'm going to draw kind of mine while, while behavior I can engage in. A lot of money for the kids on the line right there. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, now there's a lot <laughs> no, more no pressure. pressure. <laughs> no, or whatever the charity is, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. bleep them kids once again, huh? <laughs> I, I hope not. All right, and I have drawn the number 15, and that's Kimba's killer crossover, which means I bet $1 on the Hornets. And I bet another dollar on any other bet related to the game. So it is essentially, um, I get a chance at a two a two leg parlay here with okay. the game itself. So we're both we're both playing the parlay game. And by the way, all of these uh, all of these numbers provided to us by our friends at FanDuel, which have again the game at two and a half uh, plus mm. two and a half for the Hornets. Uh, this is a new one. I've never seen this one before. Method of first basket. Um, you can oh. find. It's a lot of rockets, though. Where are the Hornets? Oh, there we go. Gordon Hayward layup. Could do a Gordon Hayward. Wow. You think a Gordon Hayward layup? Uh, that's what, what are the chances of that? So you like to just basket? get it up with, basically. Like, I feel like you are also out on your first uh, bet the buzz immediately. Oh, yeah, immediately. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I feel like, Doug, there's a pattern. You like to just get it over it and bend it off. I could do if I do a correct score. I think I have an opportunity here. If I can guess the correct score, I have an opportunity to win like three hundred dollars for charity. For the kids. Okay, I think you you can't pass that up. If I <laughs> okay, nail yeah, the exact right. score, that's going to be a big win. <laughs> could be a, a big loss, a but it could be win. a big win. Oh, um, man. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to go with here. If you're ready, you I am ready. Write, all right. So I think what I one real quickly. I was looking for blocks. Because remember, last time, I'm choking up, by the way, but Mark Williams owned Alperen Shingun in the post last time. I mean, just blocked him, like, what, how many times? Four, mm -hmm. something ridiculous. So I was looking for a blocks parlay part of this, but I could not find anything on blocks. Mm. So what I'll do is I'll go with Gordon Hayward to score 10-plus points. Okay. One of the options listed. So, by the way, there's only a, 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 a there's a finite number of players you can select. It's not just a, a bunch of players on each side. So, I'm going with Gordon Hayward to score ten points. I'm going with Lamelo Ball to record six plus assists. I'm gonna okay. go with the Hornets to cover, and I'm gonna go with uh, Mark Williams to get eight plus rebounds. That's what I'm going to roll with. That's my four game parlay. And the odds on the odds on Hayward to score 10 plus points are minus 550. Hornets to win minus 110. Mark Williams minus 240. And then the Hornets to cover the spread. Did I get that one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Plus plus two and a half. Yeah, this was um, a lot so prepared for a four parlay, four leg parlay. Mm. Yeah, so that will net you. It looks like those together will net you a dollar forty. Yeah, that's nothing wow. on a four leg. Wow. Yeah, but look, you're but you're trying to win the game. It's not oh, about know. the amount yes. of money because we're not right. playing with big sums here. But the sums will get bigger for the charity if you win because you get everybody else's money. We're gonna mm -hmm. throw some other stuff in there. So it's really just about a dollar forty within the context of twenty five dollar totals right. is is a significant win. Well, I just, I guess I was comparing it to your uh, $9 payout parlay that did not mm -hmm. hit, but I think you were going to get $9 on your last one. So, and yeah. I think I'm going to take, I'm going to take the Hornets to cover because well, I have to as part of mine. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. not do the exacto correct score because I'm actually going to try to win. I, you know what? I'm going to predict, and this could lead us into a brief conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to go with LaMelo Ball to be the leading scorer of this game. I think yeah. that this game against the Rockets is the comeback game. Rod, what have you seen from the Mellow Ball? Do you buy into the excuses that Clifford is laying out 
that he that he's you know didn't get into contact uh, mm-hmm. types of practices until right before training camp. That he's still getting back into a rhythm. Do you buy those excuses that are coming from the Hornets right now? Yeah, I, I wouldn't even necessarily call them excuses. I, I they sound like reasons to me just from looking at him. He doesn't necessarily look that comfortable. I think uh, you brought up the ankle braces. You know, like that. It seems like his his shooting stroke isn't there yet. Um, and I I mean, the Hornets are such an interesting front office because at once you want to be like, man, these guys surprise us with stuff out of nowhere, but also like. Low key, I want to give them props for like no no leaks, like you know, like because they're like Yellow Mello was cleared yesterday, and you're like, what? <laughs> Why, yeah. How did no one know this? And at the same time, you're like, I mean, I guess it's good that it's not leaving the building, but I mean, it totally adjusts my expectations because when you said he's available, I assume 100 percent right away. I looking at him, I don't, I just don't think he's 100 percent, and I hope that. Uh, the guest y'all had the other day, uh, Oglesby. Um, yeah, I hope he's right in that you know it's gonna take him five, ten games or whatever, and then he'll be looking more normal. I hope that's right. No, that's what I thought too. Uh, I thought of Oglesby's comment where he was saying, Yeah, it would be that somewhere it's gonna take him a little while to get going. It, and, and I think a lot of it is at least I wonder if it's conditioning because mm-hmm. he did look good in the preseason, right? I had that, I had that tweet. It was like, yeah, I, four minutes in and my take is LaMelo balls. Good. Mm-hmm. I, after, after the discourse of Matt Moore's ranking of LaMelo being so far down the list, uh, list of total NBA players where he is. And then we had to address it. It's like, no, LaMelo's good. People forgot about it. He's a yes. really good basketball player showed that in the preseason Man, it, it looks tough for him. It really does. Uh, defensively, I you know I haven't seen and a lot has, of growth. He has like spurts. You know what I mean? Like he has like moments in the game where you see the old mellow, where you're like, you know, he comes out in the mm-hmm. third, hits like three or four threes, and you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. hey, yeah, okay, yeah, it'll be fine eventually. But yeah, it's a struggle right now. And then the whistle is just it's always going to be a thing for Mello. He drives, and I feel like he's begging for calls, and there yeah. it's just not he's not getting that whistle in the way I think he deserves. Let last it, go ahead, Doug. If you have access to League Pass, go and watch a game from last year. Just pick a random one that Lamelo played in, and you'll immediately go, "Oh yeah, he doesn't look like that right now." Like it's just yeah. so easy to see that something um, is amiss. I hope for my sake that he only needs four games to get back into a rhythm <laughs> because I just bet a dollar. <laughs> I just bet a dollar on him to be the top point scorer, which would net me because it's uh, the the odds of that are plus three fifty. Okay. It would net me three uh, two dollars and fifty cents uh, towards mm. uh, charity. It's all for charity, all for love. There you go. All right, and yeah, and last thing on Lamelo, I, I was sitting next to Nick Carboni, and we saw Lamelo attempt to drive, and he he does look. It's so laboring right now to get to the paint for him. I, he's not getting by guys at all, and I and I know like I've never thought just crazy athleticism was a part of his game. I, I right. thought it was more length savvy. I mean, he's, he's quick. He's not, right. I mean, I'm not saying he's, you know, Shaq out there on the perimeter, but he's, it's not explosion. And even still like I it's, he doesn't look like he did as, as Rod, you were mentioning Doug, same thing. Yeah. It, it looks and, like and he's laboring will, too much. I will give him a little extra, a little credit on this too, though. Um, less frustration fouls. Than, than last year so far, like mm-hmm. he because I feel like last year he doesn't get those calls, he makes a turnover, immediately compounds a problem with a with just a foul. Where you're like, why, 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 Lamella? Why, why, mm-hmm. why, like it was the turnover was bad enough, dude. Let's just get back and see if we can figure this out. So, I, I think maybe mentally he's he's trying to be stronger, but yeah, I think his body's kind of not there yet. I agree. I agree. All right. That is the great Rod Morrow joining us on today's edition of Locked On Hornets, the award winning podcast comedian, writer for HBO's Game Theory with Bomani Jones. A great show, great skits that Rod was responsible for as well. Plus, you can listen to him on the Black Guy Who Tips podcast, co hosted with his wife. So that's uh, awesome. Uh, you can find I, I hate her to do podcast. this. I have one more sicko thing. Oh, yep. yes. Please. Danny Green. Danny Green. What do y'all think? Danny Green. Stuck. Should the Hornets. 
pull the pull the Danny Green trigger. Let's do it. I don't know if anyone. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on the show, but one of my one of my uh, most hilarious takes that I've ever had. I don't. Again, I don't know if I've ever put this on a microphone. This might have just been in my group chat among friends. But I predicted Danny Green out of Carolina would be the next Michael Jordan. That was my first. That might be like my baby take. That was my like first take before I got into podcasting. I thought Danny Green was going to be the next Michael Jordan. I said all the all the stuff is there. He's got it. He was is original. That real? He's the original scoop. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that. Uh, again, I don't know that That's I put shocking. it on a microphone because I don't know the podcast is podcast exist at the, existed at the time that I made that take. Um, but yeah, that was that was my first. That might <laughs> be Danny, my first sports. So you were take driving ever. a Danny Green bus before. The and scoot, you know what? Well, and you know bike. what? I will never <laughs> apologize for that <laughs> take. I need to end on that. That'll do it for Lockdown Hornets. Thanks to Rod for hopping on with us. Follow him on Twitter at Rodimus Prime. Go check him out on his podcast, The Black Guy Who Tips. That's Doug Branson. Go check him out on his Substack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. And listen to me on WFNZ every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. We appreciate it, Rod. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. All right. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow to recap this game against the Houston Rockets and see how we were able to perform in Bet the Buzz. Get comfy. 